Okay, in this video, we're going to continue looking at transforming functions. Uh, we're going to talk about stretches and compressions in this little tutorial. At this point, we've talked about vertical translations and horizontal translations, so moving functions around vertically or horizontally. We've also reflected functions over the x and the y axis. Okay, so just to get into vertical and uh, uh, vertical stretches and compressions first, uh, I want I want to graph two functions. I find the best way to uh, illustrate the differences between two functions is by looking at their graphs, especially if you're a visual learner. Uh, so what I've done is I've just graphed these two functions. You can see here the the red or sorry the blue graph represents my original basic quadratic function, uh, and then I've I've put this three I've multiplied my x squared by three to generate this red graph. Okay, so I'll let you just kind of look at the differences between those two graphs, uh, and we're going to move on to this next one, and then I'll kind of consolidate everything that we've seen here. Okay, so same thing, I've graphed the original y equals x squared graph, and then I've multiplied by one half, and you can see that I've generated this red graph here. So just looking at these two graphs, you could use language to describe what you're seeing. Um, often people refer to this, this red parabola as thinner or stretched. Uh, this, this down here in this example, this red parabola would be referred to as compressed or fatter. Uh, either of those usually works. Um, stretches and compressions are sort of like the the math language that we use, so try to get used to using those terms. Uh, so let's just sort of uh, consolidate what, we, what we've just seen here and do a nice summary of vertical stretches and compressions. So in general, for any function, if we multiply by an a value that is greater than 1, so for example, in the last, we, we just looked at 3 here, uh, so if we multiply by some number, we call this a vertical stretch and we say it's stretched by a factor of a. So that last, uh, the last example was this red graph was stretched by a factor of a in the vertical direction by comparison to our original graph. So same thing, if we have some general function but we're multiplying by a, but this time our a value is between zero and one, <clears throat> excuse me, then we say it's a compression by a factor of one over a. Now this usually confuses people this one over a business, but if you imagine, for instance, that a were a fraction in a similar way that that our a value is a fraction in this example, uh, what we would do is we would say, so this is just another example with with x cubed. We would say, well, if we're looking at one over a, our a value in this case is one half, so we'd have one over one half. And if you recall, just if you're taking a number and dividing by a fraction, you can flip your fraction and multiply, so we'd end up with two. So we would say that this is a vertical compression by a factor of two. So that's that's where this one, one over a comes from. Uh, we, we just take our, our fraction, we flip it, and that'll tell us what we're compressing by. Uh, a lot of people have trouble with this. Don't get too confused. Usually you just say, you could just say, you know, I'm compressing by whatever number's in the denominator. Okay, so that's vertical stretches and compressions. I wanna just quickly talk about horizontal stretches and compressions. Uh, so I'm going to use the example of the square root of x here, and what I've done is uh, I'm going to I'm going to plot a graph where uh, that where I'm transforming the function by multiplying by one half inside the function. So this is different than what we just did. Uh, I've got my my multiplying factor inside my function. So you can see here I've got my blue base graph that's my root of x, and then this red graph here is uh, the the transformed function. Okay, so I'll let you think about. Uh, some words that you could use to describe uh, that graph. And just quickly, we'll look at uh, at this example here. So I've got my blue graph here, and I've got my transformed red graph here. Okay, so you can, you can see that this red graph is stretched. Uh, it, you could say that this is a vertical stretch. Uh, in, this, in this example, you could say that this is a vertical compression. But remember, we want to talk about horizontal stretches and compressions. So if you picture... Some of these points, for instance, maybe uh, this point right here, 4, 2, if I was to compress that by a factor of 2, it would end up at 2, 2, which would be right here. Uh, and you can do that with any number of points on this graph. Even if I had 9, for instance, and I compressed it by 2, you would end up with 4.5. Uh, so we would say that this is a horizontal compression by a factor of 2. All of my points are being squished inwards, which is why we get this perceived vertical stretch. Okay, uh, the opposite is the case for, for this example. If we have our blue graph, we're actually stretching uh, 
our function in the horizontal direction. So I just want to summarize uh, what we just saw there. So for any function, this time we're going to use the variable k. Uh, if, if we multiply our inside of our function by k, and k is bigger than 1, we, we call that a horizontal compression. And this is kind of confusing because this is the opposite of, of our initial uh, vertical stretch investigation. When our a value is greater than 1, we had a stretch. Uh, and, and just remember, inside the brackets, this is sort of like bizarro world. It's kind of the opposite of what you would think. So because our k value is greater than 1, it's, it's actually a compression by a factor of k. Okay, so now when we look at if our k value is a fraction or if it's in between 0 and 1, the same sort of logic applies here. We, we would for, So for example, for this function, uh, we would take our 1 over k. Our k happens to be 1 over 2, so we would flip and multiply to get 2. And then we can communicate that this is a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. Okay, so if there's a fraction inside the brackets, it's a stretch. If there's not a fraction, then you've got a, a compression in the horizontal direction. Okay, so make sure you can distinguish between uh, vertical stretches and horizontal compressions. Like I said, a, uh, a, a horizontal compression could also be called a vertical stretch, uh, but just make, make sure that you're able to differentiate between those two directions. That's one of the most confusing things about this for people. All right, so I just want to quickly look at an example. This example here is going to combine all of the transformations we've looked at so far, which is going to be a great prep for the next video lesson that I'm going to do, which is just going to combine all of the transformations. Uh, so I've given you uh, an absolute value function. I want you to first think about what all the transformations are, and then I want you to, to graph the transform function on this axis just by applying the transformations to the base graph. This is this is the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. This is our base graph. So remember the first thing before you start applying any transformations, it's always a good idea to factor. It's not a good idea. It's actually, you, you must do this. <laughs> it's a good idea to factor out uh, any common factors inside your function because remember those can skew your, your uh, horizontal translations. Okay, so if we take a look here, I could actually take this two. Uh, this two is common between my two and my and my negative four here. So I'm gonna factor out that two, and you're gonna see that I end up with a new expression that looks like this. Okay, so this is obviously going to change the, uh, the translation that we have. And if you're a little bit confused about what's going on, feel free to pause the video, jump back over to uh, the video that I did on vertical and horizontal translations, and then just pop back in and uh, hopefully things will start making a little more sense. All right, so let's state our transformation. So the first thing that's really easy to pick out is this is this three, right? This is in front of the function, and based on what we've learned in this video so far, uh, we know that if there's a, a, a number in front of the function that's greater than one, we have what we call a vertical stretch. Okay, so I've just stated that our original function, this guy here, is gonna be stretched by a factor of three in the vertical direction. We also know that we've got a a two being multiplied inside the function, and based on what we what we learned just just recently about horizontal stretches and compressions, if the number inside of our function is greater than one, we call that a horizontal compression by a factor of that number. Oops, sorry. So we're going to say that this is a horizontal compression, or it's compressed horizontally by a factor of two. So that takes care of these two numbers here. Now the good thing is if you've been following along with my video lessons up until this point. Uh, the rest of this should just be review. Uh, so we know that this guy right here, this negative, because it's in front of my function, uh, that tells me that I'm going to reflect my original function over the x-axis. Okay, so just a, we've started with three transformations here. Uh, the last two, you can see I'm subtracting two inside my function and I'm adding two outside my function. Remember, inside, this is bizarro world, so you, you would think that this is a, a shift to the left by two but it's actually a shift to the right by two. Okay, so we're gonna translate right by two units, and this number at the end, if it's positive, it tells you you're moving upwards by two. If it were, if it were negative, we'd be moving downwards by two, uh, but those, those should be our, that should be our complete list of transformations. So ne next what I wanna do is I wanna show you how to apply these to this base graph. Now, it's really important that you start your transformations uh, by by completing any stretches, compressions, or reflections. Okay, always start with these first, and then you can get to your your translations afterwards. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply my transformation or my, my stretches and compressions first. So I'm going to take each point. So for instance, this point here is, is 1, 1. I'm going to stretch it vertically by a factor of 3. So I'm going to take my y value, which is 1, and I'm going to multiply that by 3. That would be stretching it by a factor of 3. So it would end up at 3. Okay, likewise, I'm going to take this one, for example, and I'm going to multiply my y value by 3. So I should end up with 6. Okay, so I'm just I'm just going to perform these transform or sorry these uh, stretches on two example points, and then I'll show you what the final graph will look like. Okay, so now I'm going to compress these by a factor of two in the horizontal direction. So I'm going to take my x value of my point. I'm going to divide that by two. So right now I'm at one. So if I divide by two, I'll end up at one half. So you can see I'm at one half here. Uh, my x value for this point was two. If I divide that by two, I'll end up at one. So I'll end up here. Okay, so you can see I've, I've really stretched my points out compared to where they initially were. And I can do that for every point on this graph. Uh, so I'm not going to do that in detail, but what I've done is just kind of prepared what uh, the function should look like after, uh, after stretching it in the vertical direction and compressing it in the horizontal direction. Okay, so I've got a much thinner function here. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is apply my reflection. I'm going to reflect this over the x-axis. Now, I'm going to do this just by simply rotating my, my function, just because I have that luxury. It's a little easier for me. Okay, you can see that I, I'll end up with a, with a function that, that looks like this. Okay, so I've reflected it over the x-axis. So that takes care of my first three transformations. Next, it should be pretty easy for me to translate this, this function to the right by 2 and up 2. Uh, if you just kind of refer to the origin here, 0, 0, uh, if you just if you if you count with me, you can see that I'm going to move it one, two over to the right, and and the, these points come with uh, come with it once I move the the function to the right by two. Uh, likewise, I'm going to move it up by two now, so you can follow with the origin. That would be one, and oops, sorry, my mouse is sticking, and that would be two right there. Okay, so you can and you can follow these points. They've they've moved. Uh, with my with my function as I tr as I've translated it, uh, and this would be my my final function here. Okay, uh, if you're doing this on pen and paper or pencil and, with pencil and paper, it's always a good idea to sort of label your function just so your your teacher, whoever's looking at your work, knows that this would be your final function. Uh, but that should be our our completed um, transform graph from our base graph. Okay, so that's it for this video. Uh, what you're going to see in the next one uh, that I'm going to do very shortly will be uh, a combination of all of the transformations we've done, very similar to the last example uh, that, I, that I just did. I'll probably post a series of examples, maybe one for each um, base function that we've looked at, uh, and that should give you a pretty good idea of uh, where you should be at with transformations.